Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Okay, we're talking about the game and not our review. <laughs> this review is available for all. Um, and I guess we should get that out of the way before we even talk about the game. Uh, this game is, what does it say, 17 and older? Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking that's kind of a high rating. Uh, high, what do you mean high? Well, things are rated like that normally because uh -huh. of sex, language, and violence. Sure. Okay. The violence in this game is talked about. Yeah. There's no nudity in the game. Nope. Although there's a, maybe you could argue that some cards if you extended them. But they're not extended, right. so it's it's a null point. And violent. Oh wait, and, and there's there's a bit of language. On yeah. like maybe two cards. Flavor thing. text. Flavor text. If you're not looking for it, you'll miss it. So anyhow, we only say that because this is a game that's based on Spartacus Blood and Sandals, a TV show, which has copious, copious amounts of all three of those things. Yeah. <laughs> So, this game is based on a TV show. When I first saw this game, I didn't give it a second thought because I just assumed it was yet another game that was based on uh, something. But then I heard good reports about the game from people I trusted. So, we decided to try it out for ourselves because of all the opinions we trust, ours, we trust the most. Absolutely. That sounded a bit egotistical. But <laughs> true. Let's look at the game. Each player starts with a player board, and on it there's your treasury where you'll put your coins that you'll get over the course of the game. Uh, nice cardboard coins, although some people have replaced those with a little metal coins. It shows your special abilities, your starting assets, and then at the top here you're going to keep track of your influence. Now where you start your influence, you can have a long, a regular, or a fast game, although to be warned, a fast game, quote unquote, is two hours. Uh, this game here is two and a half to three hours, and this one is an over three hour game. So you would likely want to start your influence at seven. Uh, and there's, these are the different main characters, or at least the main schemers that are in the game. And so you're gonna take one of these. Now the starting assets are going to give you a certain amount of gladiators, slaves, and guards. Gladiators and slaves are going to come from these cards here. These are starting gladiators, which will have uh, stats, uh, attack, defense, and speed. So probably 3-2-2 three, two, two somehow, or like this one, 2-3-2. Two, two. You also have slaves. They almost always are 1-1-1s. One, one, and then you'll also start with some guard cards, which come from a completely different deck. And you get those ready, you get your money, and the game begins. The very first thing you will do on your turn is you will do upkeep. Some people will have been exhausted, their cards will be turned upside down, so you'll reflip them. But other than that, each slave you have brings you a coin each turn, and each gladiator you have costs you a coin. So here I'm breaking even because I have two slaves and two gladiators. I have two slaves and four gladiators that I need to pay money. If I can't, I'm going to lose some of these people. Then after that we have uh, probably the longest phase of the game and that phase revolves around these intrigue cards or these scheming cards that players will have over the course of the game. Uh, each player is going to get three more of them each turn and then starting with the start player and going around the table, players are going to play these cards. Now there's a couple things about playing a card. You can't play a card for what it says on the card unless you have that much influence. So if you're playing a long game, you can't play any of these at the beginning. Well, if I started at seven, I could play any of them. If you want to play a card that you do not have enough influence to do, uh, I want to play a card in front of me and I do not have, for example, the 11 influence that it costs for me to play this card. I can ask someone else to give me their influence. I can offer them money. I can offer them cards. I can make any kind of deal with them that I want. Once they give me their influence, then so be it. I can play the card. Now, 
when you play cards, you can often just discard them for money. That doesn't require influence, but most of the time, people are going to play them. Either, here, this one gives you $5. This one, I can discard a ready slave, minus one to the target dominus. So I can get rid of one of my slaves and make someone else lose an influence. I can give two influence to the person with the least influence. I can play guards in front of me. Anytime someone tries to do something to me, I can ro discard the guard and roll a die to four through six. It's the, the card that they played against me fails, and uh, on a one through three, well, nothing happens. The guard doesn't stop it. I can steal three gold from someone else. I can pay two gold to everyone else and take an influence. Uh, I can draw two cards. There's all sorts of things. There's also reactions. These are red cards, which can be played when someone after someone else plays a card. So everyone is going to be playing these cards back and forth until everyone has decided that they are done playing cards. At that point, we go to the market phase. During the market phase, you're going to put down market cards in the middle of the table equal to the number of players in the game. And then you'll turn over the first market card and players are going to bid on that card. So you can see here, this here is, well, look at that. It's Spartacus himself and we can bid on him. And if you notice, he's a somewhat better gladiator than the starting ones, a 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Not to mention that he has a special ability. Here's another guy who's a 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Here's another 4-4-4. Four, four, four. And here's a better slave who gives a special ability. Uh, not only is she a 1-1-1, one, 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 but you, you can exhaust her to gain a gold. You also, sometimes during the market phase, will get weapons and equipment that you can use in a gladiator battle. So, Players are going to bid for these. The way they do that is each player is going to hold out a certain amount of gold in their hand, reveal them at the same time. Whoever has, puts out the most gold wins the item and pays that much gold. If there's a tie, all the tied players put the gold down in front of them and stick out their hand again. And then they keep doing that till eventually one person wins, pays all that gold and takes the item. Finally, after all the items are gone, there's going to be one more auction phase in which players are bidding to host the games. So whoever wins that bid is now going to be the host of the gladiator combat. That host automatically gets one influence for being the host. They will then invite two gladiators to come and fight. They can invite themselves as one of the gladiators if they want. If they invite you, you better send a gladiator out or you can lose an influence. If you do accept the invitation, then each person is going to put their gladiator on the two spots and they're going to pick which gladiator they're using. So let's say here, starting gladiator is going up against Pericles. Pericles it would be over here. Pericles is a 4-3-3. Three, three. The starting gladiator is a 3-2-2. Three, two, two. Now that doesn't mean the starting gladiator automatically loses, but first each of them is going to take a pool of dice equal to what they've rolled. So. The starting gladiator is going to get three red dice, two black dice, and two blue dice that he'll put in front of him. While Pericles gets four red dice, three black dice, and three blue dice. And he'll put those in front of him. And then combat is ready to start. For each round of combat, players are going to roll their blue dice. So let's say Pericles rolls first, and he rolls seven on his blue dice. The starting gladiator rolls his, and he rolls four. Pericles rolled higher, so Pericles goes first. Pericles can move three, because he has three blue dice. So Pericles just charges straight up. Then the starting gladiator moves up into Pericles, and the starting gladiator will now attack him. He has three dice, and he rolls, and he rolls a six, two, and a one. Pericles has three black dice, that he rolls, and he rolls a 5-4-2. The dice are arranged from highest to lowest, and you see here that the 6 beats a 5, so that's one hit. A 4 beats a 2, so that's a block, and a 2 beats a 1, so that's also a block. If you roll extra dice, that on the, if the attacker rolls extra dice, then there's nothing to block them, then they need to be a 3 or higher to be a hit. Otherwise, it just needs to be higher than the die that it's facing against. So he does one hit. Now that he's done one hit, to Pericles. Pericles has to decide what he's going to do. So Pericles says he's going to sacrifice speed. He takes one hit, he loses one of his blue dice. They then roll again. Pericles gets a six, the starting gladiator gets a five, and so now Pericles goes first. He rolls his attack dice. He gets a six, a four, a three, and a one. And then the starting gladiator rolls two dice, and he gets a six and a three. Now he blocks the first hit, but the second one goes through, and then the third hit goes through because it's a three or higher, while this one misses completely. So Pericles does two hits. This will continue. They'll go back and forth. 
You can pick any dice you want to lose. However, you can never lose all your dice in one color. So eventually you're going to be down to one of each. That's the, that's the least you can have of dice. At that point, if you lose one more die, then you surrender. If you come down to one die left over, then you're injured. If somehow in one row of combat you lose all your dice, you are decapitated. Why does that matter? Well, being decapitated hurts you, by the way. But at the beginning of a match, all the players are going to be taking their markers and up to three coins, and they can bid on who they think is going to win. They can bid to whether there will be an injury or not, and they can bid as to whether it will be a decapitation or not, and they will receive money based on their bids. If your gladiator wins, he becomes favored, which means every time he goes out, the player who sends him out is going to get more money. And if you become favored three times, then you become a champion, which gives you a point, and you get even more money when you send him out in the combat. Weapons can also change how combat works. The winner of the combat is going to get one influence point, and then you go to the next phase. And this will continue with all these different phases until one player gets to 12 influence. At that time, they win. I am Spartacus. You can be Spartacus. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's cheesy in this game. <laughs> uh, okay. This game is essentially, you feel like you're playing two games in here. There's one game that's all about the intrigue mm -hmm. and the bidding. Yeah. Um, and then the other game is the actual fights themselves. It almost feels like a mini game yeah. inside the game. Uh, the fights are a little less tactical than I thought they could have been. V hugely less tactical. Well, there's a big giant board. You can move all over the board, but essentially you move up to the air person and hit them. Yeah. I mean, there is stuff to be said with, you know, kind of positioning and trying to make sure that you get the first attack, but... That's really kind of strange. Yeah, that's that's minor comparatively. I think if there was multiple gladiators, it the, it might have mattered more. And maybe there would be an expansion someday. Gladiator. The enhanced version. Who knows? Um, I had that thought while we were playing. It would be really cool if we could like invite four gladiators to fight against each other. I thought it would be awesome. But that being said... I didn't dislike the gladiator combat. No. It was quick and fun, and I liked the idea of the pool of dice, because you have to make these tough decisions. Mm -hmm. Am I going to pull out my defense dice, or am I going to pull out my move dice, or you almost never pull out the attack dice? You know, which dice am I going to pull out? And so I, I, I thought that was enjoyable. Um, so let's talk about the different aspects. What do you think of the intrigue phase, where you basically are just nailing each other with cards? Well, I didn't... I don't know. That just seemed to me like a... I, I take that mechanic that's been overdone. Yeah. Um, so at least there's a lot of chances to block them in this game. Yeah, you could. Uh, but for me, I, I don't know. I, there were some times where I wanted to go after the other people, but I was also trying to find those cards that that gave you money, so that you could bid more on the people to get more uh, more of the servants or more of the gladiators into your into your barn, so to speak. I guess I don't know what you would call it. Uh, but I, I was looking. I was more wanting to have those cards than the ones that smacked other people down until later in the game when that's all I wanted was to smack somebody else <laughs> well, But you know what? That, that's a big focus, I think, of the game. Yeah. That intrigue card part of the game is yeah. a big chunk of the game. But when it comes down to it, those things you buy are probably the most critical things. Yeah, because... The weapons and gladiators and mm -hmm. slaves, you really need them. Yeah. And so... The, the Intrigue cards also, I won't say that they were unbalanced, but there were some that are eons better than others. Yeah. To make someone else just simply Hugely. lose a point or to make yourself gain a point, that's great. The idea of needing someone else's influence to play a card, yeah. that's a cool idea. Very cool. I like it a lot, but you almost never have to do it. If you play the... well, I don't know. We did a lot in our game. Well, we did, but it, I mean, it could have been done a whole lot more. True. If, if you start... If you play the long game where you start at one then you would have to do it from the very beginning. Yeah. And that would be very interesting. In fact, I would argue that maybe you should play a game from one and then the first person to eight wins or something. Mm -hmm. And I think, and that would change the game a bit. As it was, I thought uh, we started with the, the regular length game and I thought it was just a little long. Mm -hmm. I would have preferred that it was 30 minutes shorter, I think, because it was pretty lengthy for what the game is. The game is not a super heavy game. I think we need to add a caveat with that, though. We did have one guy that was taking a long time on his turns. 
<laughs> he was playing Dominion. Uh, yeah, he was. I mean, <laughs> I'll take this card, to discard this one, and take this one. Yeah. So, I mean, that, I think, drew out the game more than anything else did. I, I, I think if he would have been playing a little bit more on the ball, it probably would have been okay. Uh, and it wouldn't have felt that long. There's a couple things I want to say negative about the game. With the caveat that I'm just going to say now, I, I, I did enjoy it. I'm not sure that the four different, I would say, factions or the four different dominies are equal. I think the guy who has guards, his ability is a little bit better than others. Because he can discard three guards to get a point. Everyone else has to discard three gladiators, which you have to bid on the windows. Yeah. Or the other person who discards slaves, which you have to bid on the windows. And the guards, you can just draw them. You I get think, them for free. Yeah. yeah, I think his is a little easier. I didn't think that was game-breaking, but it seemed... I will say this, though. Pay attention to your special abilities. You must pay attention to your special abilities. And the reason is, is because I lost this game because I didn't pay attention to Oh, that's true. Abilities. You could have won. I could have won before the guy, and it would have been so sweet. <laughs> <sighs> now, the game does naturally have players where they will be attacking the person in the lead. Mm. The person who's ahead is going to have the most intrigued yeah. cards played on him. Uh, likely, um, his gladiators will be wailed upon by his stuff. Um, Unless he gets Spartacus. Yes, and that's the other negative thing. Not necessarily negative, but when you first play the game, you don't necessarily know the value of all the gladiators. And... There's probably four gladiators who are head and shoulders above everybody else. Spartacus would be one. Crixus is probably another. The there's two. Then there's two beasts. Yeah. You know, oh the Doctor, uh, the is is one. I mean, there's some good ones, and they are way better than everybody else. Mm. They will. Their special abilities alone help them out. I think in the in the gladiator arena. So. That's okay as long as you know it. But if you let someone win it for three gold or three, you yeah. know, then then you'll be really annoyed because how is you you're not you're gonna have a hard time getting rid of them. Right. So all that being said, did you like the game? Yes. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I um uh, I, I, ever since I was a kid, I've always enjoyed. Um, I mean, I remember things uh, like reading books and stuff like that about gladiators, and and uh, I I remember watching the original Spartacus Night. Probably fell asleep halfway through it, but <laughs> yeah. that was when I was a kid. Um, so I've always enjoyed the theme. Um, this one, uh, I, I I thought the aesthetics of the board was kind of strange. There's just a big puddle of blood in the middle of the arena. Yeah. And like, okay, don't run through that. You'll slip and fall down. But uh, I, the gameplay was good. I, I enjoyed the entry part of the game where you're trying to smack other people and then, hurt your, and then help yourself at the same time. Uh, I enjoyed the collaborative sense to where you're trying to use somebody else's influence uh, to get what you want done. I like that aspect of it. Um, but it's, uh, um, I don't know. Well, I liked it. Well, I like it too. Uh, I think the, the one of the things going forward is it's very thematic. Mm -hmm. Everything really fit into place. That your gladiators cost you money, your slaves bring you money. Yeah. I like that aspect. The bidding aspect I like. The uh, the cards. While you know, if you draw better cards than the people, I think you have a better chance. But the, needing other someone else's influence to be able to pull off a scheme, right. I thought that was neat. Using guards to foil schemes. Uh, it. It's probably, for me, it's just a little longer than it should be. Hmm. I liked it, and but it should be a game that's an hour, an hour and a half, not a two, two and a half, three hour game. Yeah. Uh, and, and you can do that by just shortening the number of victory points you need. And so right. I think if you do that, then I like the game a whole lot more. Hmm. These people are all vile people, <laughs> from what I can tell on the TV show and such. There, there's not a whole lot of people to cheer for here, but you know what? You're gonna cheer for your people anyway. <laughs> yeah. You want to backstab people, this is the game for you. So I'm going to give it one trident up. That has three points on it, so. Okay, so a 1.3. <laughs> wow. That's math for That's you. That's a stretch. Okay. Okay, well, I'm going to give it uh, one sword up with a shield. It's not really two. Um, I'm going to give it a 1.5. <laughs> so, I mean, you could use the shield to smack your guy in the head. We have such a... So a smooth, it's, elaborate it's rating system. But that's okay. All right. So we who are about to die salute you. Wait, should we say that? No, because I'm not. I'm not. No. Okay, he salutes you. I don't. Spartacus. Check it out. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com.
You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.